So a couple people have asked me before uh, about something called Fibonacci time zones. So on Trading View in the upper left hand corner here where you normally pull out your Fib retracements, there's a whole slew of extra little things that are in here. And one of the things that people have seen me use from time to time is these Fibonacci time zones. And people ask me uh, a couple of questions. The two most common ones that I get uh, fairly frequency, frequently are what are they and what do they do? So like all things Fibonacci, uh, they are just meant to show like large pivot points on charts. Now, these Fib time zones perform best when they're done on like large time frames, like daily, weekly, sometimes even the monthly. But with these Fib time zones, the way that you draw these is you go into Trading View, you click the Fibonacci time zone, and you draw these Fib time zones from highs in charts to lows or lows to highs, however you want to draw them. All right. So in this instance here, uh, right. So what I'd like to do is I would like to pull one. Let's just say from the high before COVID to the COVID low. And it'll pull out a whole bunch of Fibonacci's here for me. Okay, so you guys will see this in a second. Pulls out a whole bunch of Fibonacci's here for us, right? And all these all these uh, vertical lines that you see, the, the green vertical lines on your chart, these are the Fibonacci time zones. So to answer the first question of what are they, they are essentially just trying to predict moments on the chart where there may be pivots. Okay, so when you draw these, these Fibonacci time zones from a high to a low or a low to a high or whatever it is that you're drawing, right? You're just looking at these vertical lines when price goes through them as potential pivots. So you use your technical analysis in those moments, right? Along with those potential pivots to give you a moment of potential opportunity in which maybe you're looking for a reversal on a stock or maybe you're looking for a large continuation move. You use these pivots generated from the Fibonacci time zones to try and help time your moves. Okay, so one of the ones that I would like to actually share with you is on GME. Okay, so on GME, now this was like one of the coolest ones, like maybe of all time, probably, you know, I'm not, you know, a mind reader, but this is probably like one of the coolest ones of all time. So I pull it from the bankruptcy scare lows, right? When Keith was buying and doing all that kind of stuff, right? To the sneeze high. All right. And it generates the green vertical lines that you see on your chart. Now, what's really interesting is where the cat just so happened to come back. Right on a daily Fibonacci time zone taken from the all-time low to the all-time high. And that Fibonacci time zone was actually what we were using in unison with our technical analysis to help call that giant bottom on GME. Okay? Now, I'll show you here like what I mean by using our technical analysis. All right, was that we had a giant bullish butterfly on GME at the same point in time where we had just completed it and then you had that fib time zone come in. So when we were trading this in the moment when we had that Fibonacci time zone, we were going, wow, there must be something that is coming right around that period of time. And we had been looking for $10 for a long time. We had been waiting for that and waiting, and then it got there on the completion of this harmonic structure. And we were like, well, not only is there the completion of the harmonic structure at the level that we have been waiting for, but then we have a FIB time zone taken from three and a half years ago, lining up roughly in the same zone where it looks like we have a really good entry on GME stock. And that pivot, that FIB time zone happened quite literally two days Two days before the cat ended up coming back and doing his tweet stuff. So these Fibonacci time zones, right? What are they and what do they do? They are moments on the chart using technical analysis along with Fibonacci, which is just a way greater conversation, right? To be predictive of potential pivot points on a stock's chart. And 
what's another kicker to this is you don't always have to pick these big moments in times like what we picked on GME, picking it from an all-time low to an all-time high and then happening to have this Fib Time Zone line up here. Sometimes you have like a trend that's going on with a stock, right? In GME's instance, you got the low, the high, the low, the high, the low, right? You've got kind of this trend going on with GME here. So also in the tools, there's something in here called the trend-based Fib Time Zone. These ones are very similar in the way that they're drawn. There's just a third point that you draw from. So when we draw this one on GME, we are going from a low to a high to another low. And in the settings here, I have adjusted it so that the trend-based FIB time zone is using Fibonacci points, 382, 236, the golden pocket, 886, 1.618, all the same FIBs that we use, right? And that generates these zones, right? Again, these vertical lines. Now, let me get rid of the green ones so you don't get confused. All those vertical lines are from the trend-based FIB time zone, and they show pivot points on the chart. You can see how eerily unbelievable it is that the pivots of the 236, huge candle that day, and retracement, the 382, huge candle, big retracement, and the golden pocket, the final pivot before the shareholders meeting and GME dropping a total of 22%, right? These trend-based FIB time zones are supposed to help you identify, again, moments of potential pivots or interesting points of, uh, well, I, points of interest on the charts. So if we zoom in a little bit where we have those FIB time zones, you can then actually see how important these pivots really became, right? That 236 pivot came just before there was a 30 plus percent gap up in GameStop. That 382 pivot came before there was a multi-day run on GME of 54%. The golden pocket pivot, right? Right in this moment where the golden pocket was, you guys can see that there was a whole bunch of fuckery and then where that golden pocket hit, it ran up 15%, but ultimately came back down another 15%. So this was an important moment on the chart. And what's really interesting is where price was in that moment is where price almost hovered for the last several fucking weeks at around that $26 range. And it was actually exactly where resistance was found on this little push. These FIB time zones show moments on the chart. And for me personally, when I use the trend-based ones, I don't really look at the 236, the 382, or the 0.5. I really just use the golden pocket, the 886, and then the 1.618, the 2.618, and the 3.618. All right, those are really the ones that I use along with that regular FIB time zone, okay? And all these FIB time zones do is they just show moments of potential pivots on the chart. Right, we could erase this one right here, and we could we could change the 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 trend of this. Right, we could go from this high to this low to this high, and now you see how that's kind of changed things, right? So you have to remember that the more information that you encapsulate within those fib time zones, the more reliable that you would you will find those pivot points become. All right. So that's the end of my discussion on FIB time zones and trend-based FIB time zones. Hopefully you guys have found that useful. Don't forget to uh, you know press the little thumbs up button or do whatever. Or you can even hit subscribe if you thought that that was kind of neat. And uh, we'll be doing more things like this uh, with the rest of the content we put out. So thank you for tuning in and uh, we'll see you later.